always on the forefront of modern tour technology. Level Tours is proud to introduce the Tourtron Tour Thousand. New tour technology allows us to tour everything for you and say the word tour a lot. I'm Gazebo Malta and this is Checkpoint. Birds. Hello and welcome to Level Tours. Each week we give you a public tour and a private tour of the same level. We'll show you the sites and give you tips like how late I can grab that health kit. Let's take a glance at the east side of the map here. That's the real estate, the stupid spot up there, uh, down below it, the desk room, and then here is the Metro Deli Grocery. Let's begin over at the real estate. This is Arthur Renikulich Real Estate, uh, residential commercial investments and mortgages is what they do. You've got a window, two exterior doors, two interior doors, and some art on the wall. Funny enough, it's all about cupcakes here in the real estate office. Does that say the top of the best in bakes? That's not how grammar. And then these two are the same thing. What is up with that? Arthur Renikulich really has a thing for Jane's cupcakes, or perhaps Jane. I wonder if Mrs. Renikulich knows. Scandal. <laughs> Let's head into the desk room. We call it the desk room because there is a desk in it. Uh, behind the desk room, we've got the back office. Uh, the back office has a trash pile out in front of it. And in that trash pile is a noodle ball. Above the noodle bowl, well, above the desk room is the stupid spot. You get up there by climbing up one of these soda machines on either side. We call it the stupid spot because there's really no safe way in or out. Uh, you do get a pretty good line of sight to that spawn over there and the box over there. Uh, but that's about it. Have you ever noticed that when you're crouching, your reticle is completely still? But when you stand, it kind of does this big smiley wave, even if you're not touching the right stick. Uh, it does like this big party grin back and forth. So crouch when you're sniping. Anyway, that's enough from the stupid spot. Uh, let's go onward. Oh wait, well, this was a detour. Let's go backward. <laughs> uh, so we were in the desk room at the desk box uh, and notice here how far to the right I can be when I crouch down and grab that box. Even when I'm grabbing this last thing, I can stay almost over to the right and not be in line of sight of that window over there. Uh, and then next we'll head into the Metro Deli Grocery. That's uh, the beautiful sign they've got out front there. They do coffee, sandwiches, beer, heroes, everything you'd find in your basic bodega. And as I walk through the Metro Deli Grocery, notice uh, what I'm doing with my eyes, or try and figure out what I'm doing with my eyes. Because uh, I'm about to replay this clip, and I'm going to show you with a little overlay uh, what I'm doing with my eyes while I walk through here and try and clear this room. I'm clearing this as if there was one guy with covert or something that I'm trying to find. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, let's go through that. Let's just rewind here and, and I'll try and narrate that as it goes. All right, the right side's pretty clear. And then I'm checking towards the box across from us there, uh, towards the box again, and that upper window at the firehouse, doing a scan across, checking the window, check the fire truck, box, uh, cigarette counter back there, then across to the 24, to the box, fire truck, window, checkpoint, and radar. And now do a sweep and we're through the room. Don't know if that's helpful to you at all, uh, but I think this is. The ladder at the firehouse faces out because firemen put out fires. So hopefully that will help you to remember uh, that the ladder faces out that way. Uh, might also be helpful to remember that both of the ladders on the firehouse uh, face the same way. Actually, all the ladders in this map face the same way, uh, which is away from the firehouse. Uh, but we'll take a look at the one across from there in just a minute. Here is the chief's office. This is the chief's desk. Uh, people like to hang out here for last stands. It's pretty much a desperation move, but uh, you know, I've seen it win uh, a couple times, <laughs> mostly years ago. Uh, this back room is better for last stands, really. But I think your best spot on this side is probably the alley back here. Uh, anyway, there's a giant hole upstairs here. Looks like it was probably like a fire pole hole, but then there's not... A hole up there and there's obviously something upstairs because there's a hole here so did they have like two fire poles <laughs> one that like slid down over here and then you had to like run over here and jump on this fire pole i don't know anyway it might just be a hole in the ceiling uh, floor floor ceiling anyway 
Uh, from here, you can snipe over to there, uh, but because that's pretty exposed to the left side, I think this is a much better spot for your sniping adventures down to those windows. Uh, from here, also a terrific marking spot, the best marks in the map from right there. Uh, you can mark all the way to the back, and as people run across to the 24, you can always catch good marks there. Nice opening position. Here's a cool um, trolley bomb, uh, and then let's go check out the fire truck. Fire truck, fire truck! Uh, inside the fire truck, you have pretty great coverage of this whole left side of the map, but you are vulnerable to the uh, single room upstairs and just kind of generally the back uh, behind you. But you have a pretty great look on that uh, right side of the 24-hour window. Uh, and uh, if you climb up on this railing, you can catch somebody in that left window. That's usually if you like get a good headshot on somebody in the right window and they take off running, you can like clip an ankle there. Um, anyway, you can go over the top of that and head into the front office of the firehouse. There's a window and a door on the front and two doors inside that lead you to the back office of the firehouse here. Uh, and then from here, you can continue on into the garage of the firehouse. Here's the reception desk. People like to hide behind that. A few bookcases, a few yellow cabinets, and uh, that's pretty much it. And then you've got stairs that lead back upstairs. But we were talking about the front offices. Uh, so this is the back office, and that's the front office. Uh, people do like to hang out here and snipe. There is that health kit on that desk. If you like to hang out and fight there, this spot is very vulnerable to up there. Uh, and that small window, side window there, as you'll see during the public tour. Not to give any spoilers, this is our first time doing the tours in this order. I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Anyway, decent uh, hanging out spot there to catch little glimpses of people. Uh, but this one's terrible. All you can really see is into the 24, so you have to kind of come out here and expose yourself. Uh, and this is a great vantage point, but it is obviously really only useful if somebody's in the 24 covering for you. Uh, your team is on in in here, that is. Uh, and this is the 24-hour hotline, Ace Electrical Repair. Uh, they do installation, heating, cooling, HVAC, all your AC and electrical needs. Uh, <laughs> this is the 24-hour box. People call it the 24 just for shorthand. Back here is the filing cabinets room. This is a nice safe place to do a little crafting or heal up. You may ask why we call it the filing cabinets room. Filing, filing cabinets! cabinets. And that's the bulk of the 24 hour here. Uh, before we move on, we should probably check out the uh, checkpoint here on checkpoint. Uh, it's a big rectangle. It's got some sandbags in it and a desk, a bunch of these barrels. Uh, that blue bin has some a health kit on it. And uh, that's kind of it. Not a lot to describe in here. I do have this shot. But let's go back through the 24 into the liquor store, which literally has no other name. It's not like Checkpoint Liquors, it's just Liquor Store. <laughs> anyway, pretty good vantage across the plaza and toward the real estate there. Uh, and also a great uh, camping spot back here. A lot of people like to camp behind this desk, but I think it kind of really screws you if you get in trouble uh, because people from over there uh, in front of the real estate on that concrete wall or on the ambulance can shoot right down on you. Uh, so my advice is, uh, hang out back here by the Redstone Industries sign. Oh yeah, right out here is a sign that says, uh, Redstone Industries, I think. Anyway, alleys! Whee! <laughs> uh, there's three alleys around the back here of the checkpoint, and that leads us around to the garbage truck, uh, or recycling truck, depending on what locality you're in. Garbage truck makes a pretty good set of stairs to get us up on top of the movie theater here. Uh, or the marquee uh, is what a lot of people call it. Um, and this has great sight lines all across the map. Uh, we did a previous sight lines on checkpoint tour quite a while ago, but it's a really good uh, coverage of every single sight line you could probably ever want on checkpoint. So I'll just refer you to that. Maybe we'll want a little card. Uh, this is a pretty cool angle. I think I forgot to mention that. Always nice to pop in on someone's fight. Oh yes, and this ladder faces in because movies, you have to stay in for movies now. So. Uh, yeah, or also, it also faces away from the firehouse, if that helps. I don't know. All the ladders on this map face the same direction, so. Uh, pretty good sight line from up here. Uh, you do notice that as you crouch walk over, you'll be hanging by, like, literally the tiniest of pixels. Ankle strength on this guy. <laughs> anyway, back here we've got the cubicles. This looks like a movie theater, but it was actually converted into an office park before the apocalypse here, so... Uh, this is a cubicles area, and above here is this mysterious hole. 
which I have wondered for years why there's a hole there. Because like, if you if you think about where that hole leads, there's a room up there, and it should be like behind this wall. There should be a door in this wall here, or maybe like in this wall here, there should be a door, <clears throat> or or maybe out front, uh, there should be some kind of a a panel or a door that leads to where that is. But there's nothing, and these don't these windows don't like break, and there's nothing on the side. But there's just this like mysterious hole up in the ceiling here. Uh, and you can throw things up in there. Uh, you know, if you, if you throw a wall, a bomb, all the walls exist, a uh, little bomb, bomb will stay up there and blow up and stuff. But now with our new Tourtron Tour 1000 tour technology, uh, I can actually show you what is up here. After all these years, we can see an empty room. It's just an empty room. So what's going on here? Uh, well, this isn't actually a room. It's a, it's a closet. It's a very specific kind of closet. It's a monster closet. So what's a monster closet? I can best explain that by showing you a different game. Uh, this is called Wardor of Mordor, where basically you fly around on this dragon, uh, burninating everybody, and then they kill your dragon, and so you gotta go murder all these orcs. Uh, and there's like majillions of them for you to murderize, and ever more keep popping out, but they don't want to just materialize them out of thin air. So they have them walk out of one of these fake rooms. Uh, it's, you know, painted Vanta black in there and you can't go in there or anything. It's just a monster closet. So that's Floorboards of Mordor and <gasps> Death Kitty. Uh, that's a monster closet. And so is this, and uh, so are those, and so are these here. Because Checkpoint was originally designed as a prototype map for a game mode where people would play co-op against a bunch of infected running at them. And for whatever reason, they couldn't get that going, or PS3 couldn't handle it or whatever, but all these monster closets are still in the map. Uh, similarly, I think this room up here and the other four back rooms uh, are also monster closets, or maybe player closets, somewhere for you to spawn and like load up on stuff before you had to face the hordes again. I don't know, anyway. Uh, that is uh, drawing our private tour of Checkpoint to a close. I'd love to hear your feedback on the Tourtron Tour 1000 and our new tour technology, uh, or, you know, anything you got to offer. Uh, this has been Gustav Mahler, that's the private tour of the Checkpoint, and join us, won't you, for the public tour coming up in just a minute. The next time somebody asks you, hey, is that a tree on that skyscraper? You say, nah, man, I'm a subscriber of Level Tours. That's two trees and some bushes. Hey, welcome back to the public half of the tour today. We're here at Checkpoint doing our first tour. And I've got an excellent team here, so I'm looking forward to a really good game. First off, you're gonna see, uh, I'm gonna cover that window while my buddy grabs the box. And then he's going to cover me and block for me while I grab the box. Almost perfectly executed version of one of those. Uh, and then he promptly gets downed by this guy. Notice I curl into cover here and then try and switch shoulders as I face him. Uh, whoops, but I messed that up. <laughs> Can't win them all. Uh, so I'm trying to pay attention to him and also what's going on in the checkpoint. Kind of lose track of him, to be 100% honest with you. I think he might have gotten killed. Uh, but if you look at the right side of the screen, you'll see him for just a second. But I was looking at the left side of the screen, so he, uh, yeah, that, that's how that ended. <laughs> Not a perfect play, um, but it allows me to see uh, Marito's Styles camera for a second here. Oh, Marito Suave! Uh, he's going to heal up, throw a smoke for cover. He could have thrown that over the barrels, and honestly, he could have done it before he healed up. That probably would have smoked somebody and possibly uh, gotten a kill in there. But as you can see, we've gotten two of them dead. It's 17 to 18 right now. So two of them haven't died yet out there somewhere. Uh, but we're going to try and find them. One of them seems to be in the fire truck right now. And remember when I said the fire truck is dangerous? This is why. Nearly every high level player has thrown that molly 50 times <laughs> or 100 times or something. Uh, so yeah, fire truck's a pretty dangerous place to be. Uh, hard scoping's pretty dangerous too, but if I knew where that guy was, I felt safe about it. Under throw that bomb so it doesn't clear the van, but we do manage to take this guy out as the last guy sprints away from us through the real estate on the radar. Ah! 
Ah, sometimes somebody jumps you, so take cover and then strike back as quick as you can. Always best to be coming at somebody from two different angles, uh, if possible. Uh, right now, another guy's coming at us from a different angle, so I'm going to try and get cover. I do have time to heal here, but I think I'm waiting for my team, so I just kind of hard scope, clipping, clicking like a mad man on the R3 there. You see me aiming up on Dragon Slayer's head. All heads are at the same height, so if you're centered on your friend's head, you're centered on the bad guy's head. Other than that, it's just uh, waiting for that mark to float by. Uh, here I'm going to pursue. Uh, if I wanted this guy down with this bomb, I'd throw it here on the right, but I'm going to throw it past him to get the crawler and possibly whoever's picking him up and then engage Arturo and Arturo y Barbara here with uh, my revolver. I was really just trying to grab this health kit instead of do that special. Uh, but if you notice how long it takes him to die, that's why they call this the lag of us. Uh, anyway, we've regained the lead here. It seems like they've got another guy down there, and I'm seeing somebody all the way catty corner from me. Uh, so I'm going to heal up, catch this health kit again, uh, and try and remember that I don't have any ammo. <laughs> so I'm going to go with a molly. I really don't want to spend a molly on one guy at this point. I think my friend can probably take him. Uh, but when my friend goes down, I think maybe there's another guy there. I'm, I'm not really sure of the situation. So I throw in the molly, waste it on that kill. Uh, I'd always rather have my molly than your kill. So uh, it's not a stolen kill if it's a molly. I'll, I'll guarantee you that. Um, anyway, I don't have any ammo, so I'm going to do a risky play and just sprint all the way across the map here. I'm hoping that this gives my team a little space and a little time to regroup. Uh, but they continue to push forward, which is not what I had hoped they would do. Um, so I uh, craft up, and then I'm going to spend some cash. Now, I do some really bad purchasing there. I double upgraded the revolver, a gun I only have four bullets for, and I spent all the rest of my money on armor I don't need and a double barrel uh, that's not the range of this fight. Uh, so as soon as I've shot four times here, I'm basically completely disarmed. Uh, and bullets start flying from the back. I mean, it wouldn't really matter either because I was jumped. That's not super unexpected either. Uh, this is me paying the price for sprinting across the map a couple of minutes ago. There are two cameras on checkpoint. It has the fewest cameras of any map, but the two cameras do give you decent coverage of both ends of the map, and they are worth checking uh, while you're dead. We're rejoining our team here at the movie theater, and it seems like they want to keep engaging on that same fight. Uh, so I'm going to let him. I'm going to go help. Uh, this isn't one of those kind of games where I'm conf confident that we're going to win it easily. So uh, this is a no holds barred, let's win this one kind of game. Just going to check the back room while my teammates grab the box and craft up. Uh, no need for us all to sit on the box at once. Now there's a bit of a lull here. Uh, things kind of toned down for a second. And I'm not entirely sure where the other team is. They may have spawned upstairs here at the back or they may be all the way across from us uh, down there. So I'm going to let my team kind of guide that and try and go into an overwatch position on my team. Um, I'm going to let the team set the pace, that is. But they are all over here, and we're getting some decent angles. Here I'm going to try a trick bomb, but I kind of double outthought myself. He went over the other railing rather than over this railing. Here's that angle I was talking about before. That window's great unless someone's up there. Uh, and that guy doesn't get a good piece of me. Uh, so I'm going to run up behind. He must have seen my molly, so he should be running away somewhere. I lose track of him, but I've got those people out front. And I'm going to jump out this window for a double molly. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, they're down anyway. Whatever. <laughs> I still think my guy is somewhere over here uh, between me and uh, the 24. Uh, but I can't seem to figure out where. Because he's still behind me. Up there, I get a mark on him there, but he does have that down, and he's going to camp that down for a second. Honestly, we should just let that guy go at this moment. We're well ahead, so might as well. But Ibn wants to be a hero. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very instinctual, but sometimes you got to know when to let somebody bleed. Uh, here, I do basically the same mistake. I don't go into line of fire, but I do put myself in a position where I can be flanked, and there it is, and then I get downed. Uh, and this is starting to look like a comeback, but Parsnip makes a huge miscalculation, takes a special way out in the open there, and takes himself out of the game. And his team can't win without him, so uh, 
game ending mistake on that guy's uh, part. Never take a special if you're not confident that you've got it or if you're not ahead, you know. Um, so we've taken out another guy there and it's just down to the last two uh, back here somewhere, uh, I think. But if you've been paying attention to the little red dudes, you know that Arturo and Barbara are still out here somewhere. And that's him. He doesn't actually go down to the molly that was way overthrown. Uh, but he tried to fight a molly with a bomb, and it blew up in his face. Uh, so there he is. And here's one for my Euro friends. The Europeans never get to see the good gore. Dude chunks! <laughs> Dude chunks! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try to highlight those as best I can, show you some of our good old-fashioned American violence when appropriate. But that is drawing us to the end of our tour here. I'd like to thank Ibn, Marito Style, and Dragon Slayer for being excellent teammates. And I'd like to thank Forever Damned and Nora Kenshin R, the Parsnip King, and Arturo E. Barbara for being great opponents. And thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed today's tour, and I'll see you next time. Hey, Vastis!